What is going on guys? Matt, we're here at our Athens build out. This is the shop that we, we showed you the last video where we were kind of envisioning what we were gonna do. Well, we're about halfway through our build out process. We've been working on this for around seven, eight weeks. We've got another seven, eight weeks to go and we've got a lot of guys, a lot of customers and also a lot of people in the industry that have wanted to see what's it look like, wanted a little behind the scenes. So today I wanna walk you through the, the bones of what we have from the kind of production side of the shop. Uh, it's a working area. There's a lot of contractors in there working right now. And, and then as we're going, we're also going to talk a little bit about some of the cost associated with building a shop like this. So if you are at home, maybe you're in the industry, a detailer or a dent guy, and you're thinking about creating a shop like this, there's a lot that goes into it. And we've learned on the go. This is our third shop we've built out. And I want to share some of that details with you. So let's go take a tour. Uh, again, there may be times it's darker or louder. Our lighting is a bit being installed right now. But um, we'll go show you kind of behind the scenes of it. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll chat more about the uh, cost at the end. All right. So in our shop the first thing first obviously when a client walks in they're going to be in our waiting room this waiting room we love the idea of transparency we love the idea of the client being able to see kind of what's going on on not only their vehicle but maybe some of the other services we're doing so uh, a couple things we're gonna have a waiting room we'll have tv set up and some desks and some sitting areas obviously but they're also gonna have these three big windows this will look into our clean room we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment but the clean room is going to be where our PPF is installed, where some of our ceramic staging area after a car's been installed is sitting. Uh, and it's also going to be really, really kind of a kind of a sexy end to the shop. It's going to have some incredible lighting that I can't wait for you all to see once it's installed. Um, so, so uh, you know, in this area, a lot of our clients, again, they sit and wait while their services or maybe they come to pick up. And while they're getting a dent fix, they're looking over and seeing a car getting ceramic coated or they're looking over at a car getting paint protection film. It's a great opportunity for them to educate themselves about the process and then potentially become future clients for those services as well. So it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, obviously, uh, over here, we're going to have Ethan, our shop manager. His office will be right here. He'll be overlooking, obviously, everything. We're going to have cameras set up everywhere in the shop. This will be really helpful for a few things. It'll be helpful for uh, clients to trust that when their vehicles are here at the shop, it's being watched over, protected. They, it, they can feel like it's just as secure as if it was in the garage at home. Um, but it'll also allow if someone, if Ethan's up front, we've got cameras showing when people come in. We've also got the ability to have customers sitting here looking on camera at their vehicle while it's in the back of the shop. So that's kind of cool as well. We're gonna have a conference room. We do a, we do a lot of trainings uh, as, as part of our industry. We have a lot of people that come in and wanna learn about some of the services that we offer. So having some meeting space for that's gonna be great. Uh, going back here, we're gonna have a second office. We're gonna use that for some of our internal kind of a call center. So customers that are calling in, they call multiple shops. So it'll be answered right here. Uh, and then obviously we'll have another office back there that I'll be using for, for kind of a manager's office in the back. One of the things that right now is going on, again, it's loud, you hear contractors in the back. We don't even have lights set up. Our electricians are here, our plumbers are here. We've got, uh, we're getting our floor beveled in the back for our wash bay. We're also getting our garage doors installed. So there is a lot going on. One of the great things about when you do a build out is when you partner with a general contractor, they are gonna kind of help juggle everything. But for me, it's almost like buying a house. There's a ton of decisions that have to be made. So I'm here almost every day talking about everything from where I want outlets to be installed to how I want the vents of the AC to be aimed to where we want power for our washing machines. All those things are decisions that have to be made. And if you do decide to do a shop like this, those are all decisions that you start have to start thinking about. It's not just about what colors and what font you want on the wall. It's about all the other kind of the production side of things. So let's walk back in the back. We'll briefly talk about that. Again, it may be a little loud uh, and then we'll follow through and finish up in our, in our clean room. So let's walk back here real quick. So as we showed on our last video, once you leave our waiting room, you're gonna come back and this is gonna be kind of into the shop. It'll be more open and exposed. Our, our employee uh, break room will be right here. We'll have a kind of a kitchenette set up. My office will be right here overlooking the shop. Um, but then the rest of it's pretty wide open. We're gonna use this shop for obviously all the services we do. We are a dent repair shop using paintless dent repair. We also do minor uh, collision damage, some small uh, replacement parts. We also do paint protection film, window tinting, and ceramic coating. That's a lot going on, so we need a lot of space. We also need all of the space we use to be useful to all of our services. So we're putting tons of lighting up. Paint protection film and ceramic coating and window tint need a lot of lighting. Dent repair has very specialized lighting. So what we want is on our walls, each one of our walls are set up to where if a car is getting a dent repair and also needs some window tinting, we have lights we can switch on and off just to use for that space. This is again, our third shop that we've done this with. 
it's like a house. Every time you move into a new house, you learn a little bit about maybe you want do new doors or new drawers or new cabinets. In a shop, we kind of learned the same thing. And what we learned was we don't really want to have to pull a car in for dents and then move it across the shop for window tint and then move it back over for a wash bay or a, or a ceramic coating. So instead, we want to make it where everything in our shop, all of the space, is useful to all of our services. It's really, really important for us. Helps with production, helps with the lowering our likelihood of someone accidentally digging a car or dropping a tool or doing something like that. But it also just helps with flow and it allows us to really use the space the most, uh, in the most effective way possible. Um, right now, as I said, lighting is getting installed this week. It should be in by the end of this week. Uh, our garage doors are finishing getting measured out. We have ordered new garage doors because we're adding HVAC units in all of our shop, including the back. We want to have controlled temperatures. We are adding insulated garage doors and we're also widening the door over my shoulder right here. This door is going to be a 12 foot wide door. This is a little less likely that someone would accidentally uh, uh, clip a mirror or do something. It also makes it where it's a little faster to move cars inside and out. Uh, as you can see, HVAC units and ductwork is all being installed right now. Lighting is being put together. And then over in this corner, this is gonna be actually our wet bay and our wash bay. Our, our wash bay is gonna be where, again, we wash cars. It's gonna be the dirty shop, the dirty side. And in order to do that, we need to get rid of water. So we're beveling this concrete out and there's gonna be drain systems installed that can go right out the building, get it out of here so that it's not covering the floor. So again, in this shop, we've got kind of a dirtier area and then we've got more of our clean area. Uh, and then we move into the most clean area, which is gonna be where the clean room is, as we showed before. So we'll walk up there, we'll kind of show about that. And then we'll talk a little bit about the overall cost, the overall kind of things you don't see coming, the things that, that you do expect and should expect, and then uh, my thoughts going into it. And then hopefully we're about two months away from being wrapped up with this bad boy. So let's go show you the clean room and, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so as we walk into our clean room, uh, let's take a moment to explain what, exactly what a clean room is. So we talked about this in the last video, with ceramic coating, it's not as important other than the final step of the ceramic install, but with window film, with window tint, and with, with paint protection film, you don't want any dust, debris, or cross breeze to cause anything to stick to that film. So imagine laying a paint protection film. You've got it all prepped, you've got it all ready, you're going to put it on and an air conditioner kicks on or somebody opens a garage door and a little bit of dust comes off your shirt, sticks to it, you put it on, you don't notice it, and the next day you come in to inspect it, the customer's coming to pick it up and you see a little trash. That's extremely frustrating. It's slow for production, it's not good for quality and obviously we would want to redo that. So what we can do is by creating a clean room, it creates its own uh, air conditioner system for this one room, its own filter system for this one room. It also is gonna have its own garage door right here so that even if someone's opening and closing doors in the back, there's no cross breezes coming into this clean room. It also allows us to really control all the environments. That includes the lighting, that includes, again, what's going in and out, the cleanliness of the floor. So we're having all this floor uh, throughout the whole shop actually epoxied, but this is gonna be a really, really high-end epoxy. It's gonna be nice, really sexy looking dark floor, really dark ceilings with white walls. And then we're also gonna have a ton of lighting in here. It's gonna have hex lights throughout the entire ceiling with LED lights on all the walls as well. So again, we can control all the lighting. We can control the airflow. We can control, control who comes and goes in this room. Uh, and that's going to allow for the most uh, 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 maximum efficiency and quality of our installs for these services. It also, again, happens to be right next to our waiting room, so it's a great thing for our clients to be able to see while it's going on. It's a pretty interesting thing to see happen. So I can't wait for you guys to see it when it's done. Uh, we've got a really cool vision for it, and really excited about it. So in this clean room, we'll have our plotter here. We'll have some of our storage for film there. Uh, again, our lighting will all go up. Uh, our AC system, one of the things we want to do is we don't want even the AC coming on and blowing cold air right on top of a film. So we're going to have our ductwork set up to where it's blowing away from and kind of dissipating throughout the shop. We're going to have, again, its own filters set up in there. Uh, if you notice right here, we've got our wall charger, our Tesla wall charger. That's going to go in the back of the shop. So we'll be able to charge electric vehicles both, both Tesla and non-Tesla because this, the, with the new uh, systems, you could actually charge everything from a Ford Lightning to a Rivian to anything out there. So a lot of our electric vehicle friends that come in will be able to leave their vehicle when it goes home, it'll be fully charged, which is a great service for those customers as well. All right, so we've left the shop. We're actually, I, I wanted to get my numbers right. So when I'm, when I'm sharing numbers with you, this is obviously for this specific build out. 
Um, but one of the main questions we get asked is how much does it cost to do a shop like this? Um, obviously, your market's gonna be different if you're owning the building versus leasing the building. There's a lot of factors at play here. Uh, you, you may do some of the build out and some of the projects yourself. You may contract some of it out, but we're at a point where what, for us, time is money. We wanna get this built fast, we wanna get it built right, and we wanna be able to use this to do what we do best, which is work on people's cars uh, and, and, and take care of you know, all the different services we do. So we opted to find a building. Um, we actually were lucky enough to find a building that we're leasing that is owned, the, the owners actually own a contracting company. And so we partnered with them uh, and actually bid uh, a couple different bids, but had them bid on the project and, and awarded the project and the build out to the owners of the building. And, and this did a few different things. It allowed us to expedite the time significantly. It also allowed us to be really in sync with what's best for the owners long ter term and also us as long term tenants. So, um, you know, for our build out, when you're when you're talking about these builds, we went in and, and the first thing we did was we built out what all we would need to be able to use this as a shop. Uh, and, and the total for this is it ended up being around one hundred and eighty thousand dollars kind of a, as, a, as an initial starting point. And what we then did was we went to the owners and said, all right, how much of this would you have to do, whether it was our us as tenants or anyone else? And they were willing to basically absorb some of that cost as just part of just owning the building. That, that These are things like HVAC. We wanted this to be a temperature controlled environment. They saw it that they were going to have to do this anyway. Some of the demo work from the initial build out, some of the electrical and the sheetrocking and the siding and things like that, that they were going to have to do whether it was us or a, a shoe store or anything else that went in there. They were going to they were going to need to do these things. Um, and so that left us with around $100,000 left over that was going to be um, on our cost as, as tenants. And you can slice this a few different ways. You can either come to it and, and obviously write a check and pay for things outright, or you can also sometimes do a couple of things. One, one way that we've done in the past is called rental abatement, which is where we say to the landlord, we're about to make a $100,000 investment in your property. We kind of want to recoup some of this back, so I need you to give me a discount on my rent for the next blank amount of time. Uh, for us, you can also go into uh, with the landlord and say, look, I'd, I'd love to lease this. I'd love to have this built out. This is what my budget is. These are the things I want. And sometimes they will even be willing to do the build out and roll that into your lease. So again, you can skin it a couple different ways based on what your budget is, based on what you're willing to do. Um, some of the biggest costs, obviously, are HVAC. It ends up being about $40,000 for a shop this size. Um, flooring is something that, that uh, we've added to. It's actually gone over. Originally, we were going to do some kind of um, just a sealant, and then we were going to do some, some fake hardwoods in the front, and we've decided to kind of epoxy a good bit of the shop uh, with a couple of different epoxy uh, floorings, um, and that's going to end up costing us about 25000 total. Um, the overhead doors. We originally had, there are two overhead doors that are 10 foot in the back. We decided we wanted one of them to be wider just to make it where we're not having to close mirrors. We didn't want to risk damaging someone's car coming in and out. And for production, we want to be able to pull cars in and out a little faster. So we wide, are widening one of the doors from a 10 to a 12 foot. We also have uh, decided to put motors on all three doors. Those are the, the two exterior doors as well as the interior clean room door. So all of that Originally, our, our, I think our um, garage doors were only going to cost us two or three thousand dollars, and now they're going to cost us about twenty-five thousand, twenty-three to twenty-five thousand dollars. So, so again, you can go as big or as little as you want to go um, on that end. If you are going through a either a purchase or a lease, um, the big things you have to decide are first off, again, what's your budget, what's your timeline, and what are you willing to do on your own. For us, again, we are in the repair business. We're not in the contractor business. So we partner with really good people. And we can hold them to a high level, we can hold them to a high standard, and we can expect the, the, the finished product the way we want it. Um, and that's kind of how we like to do business in a lot of ways. So I hope this is helpful. If you're thinking about doing a shop build out, if you're thinking about doing something on your own, um, and you have any questions, feel free to message us or comment. We're happy to help. Um, and we can't wait for you to see the third video of this series. This will be kind of the final uh, one once we're all in and done, and hopefully that's around two months away. Um, so uh, anyway, wish us luck. If you have any questions at all, hit us up. Thanks so much for watching.